In this video, I will show you how to work with databases in .NET using Entity Framework Course Database First Approach utilizing the latest .NET version, .NET 9. Entity Framework Core is a toolset for .NET developers that simplifies database access by allowing us to work with databases using .NET objects. This way, we do not need to write complex SQL queries, instead we query and manipulate data using c -sharp code. There are two main approaches to using Entity Framework Core, the code-first approach and the database-first approach. In this video, we will learn how the database-first approach works. The database-first approach in Entity Framework Core involves generating c -sharp classes at a DB context from an existing database schema. This method is suitable when working with a legacy database or when the database design is managed outside of the application development process, allowing us to integrate the existing database into the application seamlessly. I am in a SQL Server Management Studio here and I have a database and basically I have three tables here, three pre-populated tables, a dishes table here, an ingredients table and a dish ingredients table. And I'm going to use this database to create the models and the context in a new project. So I have just created a new MVC web app project and I have already installed Microsoft Entity Framework Core, Framework Core.SQL Server and Microsoft.Entity Framework Core.Tools. So you need these three packages to be able to work with Entity Framework Core. And now what we will do is just go to package manager console here and write this command scaffold dash db context. Then here we need to input the connection string of the database that we will import. So I have already copied it. After this line, we need to write here Microsoft dot entity framework core dot sql server then we need to write dash context directory data so here we'll specify in what which directory our context will be stored which will be stored in a, a folder named data and then output directory here we specify the directory of where the models will be stored so they will be stored in the models folder and i will specify here the data annotation flag what data annotations is are basically these attributes that each property in our models take to basically validate them to specify the relationship with each other or how they will be stored in the database and if we specify this flag here when the models will be created the data annotations will be included in them so now if you just hit enter we'll wait for the build to succeed and the build succeeded if we open up our models folder here we'll see that in our models folder, we have the dish model. These are the data annotations that were included in our models. We have the ingredient model right here. And in our data folder, we have our data context. The dish ingredient helper model was not created as a separate model in our models folder, but the relationship between dish ingredient, dish and ingredient models was specified in the db context in the onModel creating method. It's a bit different from how we typically specify it, but it should achieve the same result. So this is how Entity Framework Core's database first approach works. If you found the video helpful, click on the screen to watch the next video in the series and learn how to build MVC web applications in ASP.NET Core. Don't forget to like the video if you got value from it, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.